Hi friends, welcome back. Long time no see. I thought I would come back with a bang and try to recreate James Webb's Tarantula Nebula. The Tarantula Nebula is located 161,000 light years away in the Large Magellanic Cloud and is the brightest star forming region in the galaxies nearest to our Milky Way, collectively known as the Local Group. Now I'll talk about the nebula a little later in this video, but let's talk about the products I will be using for this painting. So I've got my Brilliant Blue, I've got my Titanium White by Basics, my Cadmium Red, I hope I'm saying that right, my Deep Yellow, and my Raw Umber, both by Artist Loft. So to start this painting, I already painted my canvas black in a heavy body black acrylic paint and then I outlined the sections where the white nebula would be in the image because I felt like that was the most important part was getting that shape down because it's the most prominent thing that you see so forgive me for not showing me doing the outline but I totally messed up doing this because I decided to use black permanent sharpie Learn from my mistakes, don't do this, because after I started painting on the white, I realized that acrylic paint does not cover Sharpie. It just leaks through. So I ended up having to make the white sections of the gases a lot whiter than I anticipated it being, and it looked very vibrant. It's fine, there's nothing I can do about it. I tried, this was just kind of an experiment, but I'm just letting you know don't use Sharpie to outline your paintings, like such, such a bad idea. If you are going to attempt to do this and maybe follow along with this video and try to create your own tarantula nebula, I would definitely recommend using maybe a number two pencil or some charcoal. Maybe, maybe, just don't use pen, don't use marker. Yeah, pretty bad, but anyways, overall, the hardest part of this entire piece was just adding the white and once you kind of had the white laid, laid down and you had that overall shape of the nebula, then adding everything else was a lot easier. So I think from now on, this is something I'm going to do because I normally just kind of start wherever, but this made the most sense to me. Also, something else that I have been doing recently is I have been working with my acrylics in white and adding all the color after it has dried, and this has saved me so much time when it comes to trying to mix colors correctly and trying to blend everything out with different colors and trying to get my acrylics to appear more vibrant because all you do when the whites are totally dry you might have to wait a day or two is you will just go back over the white sections with the color you want watered down a little bit and because acrylics are so translucent this ends up working out really well as a acrylic painting technique in my opinion so if it's something you haven't considered trying i definitely would give it a go because i don't even know where i came up with this idea but i love how easy it is and if you're wondering what i'm doing right now all i'm doing is i'm just watering down some white and it's extremely watery not gonna lie i mean i'm not uh jipping out on the water that's for sure and i just lightly painted on and then I blend it out with my finger if need be but I am kind of creating some harsh lines here because I am looking at the photo as reference and I'm also trying to cover the sharpie so if you are doing it I probably want to go as hard on the white as I am but the sharpie kept bleeding through and I was freaking out so I just kept putting on as much white as possible and that's why it started looking like this but you know we're, we're challenging ourselves today That being said, this is going to be a really difficult painting for me to achieve because as you all know, if you've been following me a while or stay tuned with me on Instagram, then you know I don't really paint anything that's realistic because it's extremely hard for me and it's also just not what I'm passionate about doing. But sometimes, sometimes an image comes along like this and you say to yourself, if you're an artist, you're supposed to challenge yourself. That's what artists do, right? So that's, that's what I'm gonna attempt to do today. So 
So while you are enjoying watching me paint, I'm going to tell you some facts about this nebula because oh, why not? You're here to learn about art and learn about space at the same time. So here we go. The nebula has been of special interest to astronomers studying how stars form, and this is because the nebula has a similar type of chemical composition as star-forming regions from when the cosmos were only a few billion years old, thus offering an insight into how the stars formed in the deep cosmic past. In the mosaic of the image that I am using as reference though, it is stretching 340 light years across. When you look at this image, keep that in mind because it's a little mind blowing and um, kind of hard to comprehend. So James Webb's near infrared camera, the NIR cam displays the Tarantula Nebula star forming region in a new light because it's including tens of thousands of never before seen young stars that were previously shrouded in cosmic dust. Now back to the painting process because I'm sure you're wondering what exactly I'm doing. So for the red, I just painted the red first and I continued to layer that until it appeared vibrant, which was pretty difficult because acrylics, especially in brands like Basics and Artist Loft, it's very translucent. So trying to get this to look very vibrant is difficult, but I did the best that I could with what I had. After I added all the red though, that is when I came back in with those highlights and this was a mixture of yellow, brown, and red to kind of make it appear more vibrant but also blend it out. I didn't exactly want it to just be orange. I wanted it to have some brown in it just because there is a lot of brown in this painting believe it or not, or not the painting, but the photo. So I felt it was important to make sure that there was a mixture of that in the red as well. For my highlights, I used a number two, I think this is called a liner brush, or I don't know, kind of like a detail brush, and all I did was just dip it in red and orange, water that down a bit. I added some white in there too, and then I just painted some little tiny lines, and I did this a lot of times. It was so intricate, and... It took a really long time to do this, and in the end, I ended up covering up those pieces to try to make it look more blended out, but I just felt like it was something that needed to be done because if you look at the image, there's a lot of really high detail that's in the red area, and it looks similar to this, so I just tried to replicate that as best as I could.
this point I started to add brown all over my painting. I even covered the white in brown as well to kind of dim down the brightness of the white because as I mentioned before, I went over the white sections a lot to try to cover up the permanent marker <laughs> that I laid down on the base. And I wanted it to just blend a little bit better. So I went over it in brown and then back over it in white. I don't think it made too big of a difference because again, acrylics are so translucent, but I tried, I really tried. And yeah, I'm just kind of regretting the fact that I used a Sharpie when I should have known better, but here we are. So since I am moving into painting the stars, I thought I would talk about it because this is something that is brought up a lot when you look at a James Webb image because the stars look so different. So the reason that they look like this is because there's a primary hexagonal mirror and a smaller secondary mirror that sits in front of the primary mirror that is held up by three support beams. And when it hits the telescope, light bends at the two edges of each of the secondary mirror's supports, producing six diffraction spikes. So that is why it looks the way it does. I think the most important part of this whole piece are the stars. And that's why I spent so much time making these little tiny blue stars all over the painting. And this took me, you know, it took me a couple of hours just to do the stars alone, but I tried a new technique that felt a little faster. And pretty much all I do is I water down some blue and I dot them on. And then I use my finger to kind of blend out all of those spots I created and then based off of where the blending of the stars go when I'm using my finger that is where I place all of the stars so it's totally random where my finger places them and it just feels kind of more accurate to space because I'm not hand dotting it sometimes when you're hand dotting things things tend to go in a grid unintentionally so when I'm just randomly placing it just based on where my finger goes it's not intentionally placed and i think it looks more natural for my last steps i just went back over a lot of different areas and a very watered down white paint and I added some streaks kind of randomly everywhere and I did this to make the rest of the painting look a little more clouded because that white was so overpowering and I think it helped a little bit and after about four hours of working on it this is how it turned out. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today while I attempted to recreate this famous James Webb image. I hope you guys had a fun time and learned something. And if this is a piece that you attempt to recreate, I would love to see your recreations. Please send them to me on Instagram. It's at Lanchin Designs. And I would love to hear your thoughts on how this piece turned out. So I uh, will see you guys in the next one. Bye.